Hi hello everyone and welcome back to another video of some F1 2020 career mode with Red Bull. Today we're doing episode number 24 for the French Grand Prix of season 2, round number... I think this is round number 8. Um, but yes, first of all, we're going to rush um, the ultimate weight reduction upgrade. Yes, this is going to come in hopefully for the Austrian Grand Prix, well... You guys will find out tomorrow because the Austrian Grand Prix will be out on the channel tomorrow. Um, as the second and final episode of Career Mode of the Week. First of all, if you haven't also yet subscribed, then please do so. It massively helps me out in sustaining the channel. We're aim aiming for 250 subscribers by the end of the year. We're currently on 207 at the time of recording. So if you subscribed recently, then thank you so much for your support. But yes, once this will probably that'll probably be the last sashi upgrade, and then we'll probably get those two engine upgrades up out of the way, and then just focus because there's so many minor aero upgrades that can be put in as well. So yes. Um now I haven't really done very well at France in the past, so the energy store is a big th issue for me. We're already on the second one and it's not even the halfway through so as we skip to the um, invitational event i couldn't do the invitational event that's the other thing this is how bad i'm at france so i took this as a sign of the the um thing to come as we just decide to end it and then i realized there's no da they, they actually remove damage after um f1 2017. we've also got rain in qualifying so that's just gonna add to another issue for not going out because well I'm not doing I'm not putting a big effort in um, it's because pretty much it's not 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 worth it Alfa Romeo now are technically the fourth fastest car on the grid but we'll have to wait and see if they can translate that on pace Mercedes and Ferrari are both caught up to us but then we're going to stretch away with our ultimate weight reduction upgrade hopefully at the coming either the, the, this race or the race after the British Grand Prix as well um, not too many people up raise or has now gone ahead of McLaren McLaren really down there now they've had a woeful season so far and we are around number eight there confirmed as it is raining here the circuit Paul Ricard as we uh, well let's just say I did not enjoy the wet I was went out obviously on a dry setup because the race is going to be bung dry um, and we just kept losing the back end um, yeah it was we actually set went out there and set the slowest time ever at Paul Ricard yes it was it was just I was it was that bad it was and I could have waited because the, the track was going to dry up it was a two minute two minutes seven and um, we're really not going to bother. Um, we know our, it's going to be up to our teammate really to carry the gun for us, and we'll try again at Austria because Austria actually is where we won last year. So we we got if we have fresh power units for a fresh fresher unit for that. But you can see there that the, some of the units are at eighty percent. Interestingly, Ocon managed to beat some did manage to beat some a lot of cars on our set of intermediates, which. It was a bit iffy. I don't. I don't. I think that might be a little bit of a glitch. Um, but we're literally the only person, other person there to set. And the alphas as well. Not really where their um, performance should be. Mm. Time for the race. Come on. I know you can do better than that. You've left yourself with a lot of work to do in the race. We still need to get a good result out of this. Welcome to the circuit, Paul Ricard, current home of the French Grand Prix and events dating all the way back to 1906. It's been held at many venues over the years with famous moments from Dijon and Manicor, the feature of many a highlights reel. And let's hope we see more of those in the race today. Six lefts and nine rights give us a total of 15 corners here at the circuit, Paul Ricard. And a lap covers an overall distance of 3.6 miles. Average speeds will be somewhere in the region of 142 miles per hour and they'll be maxing out on the Mistral Strait at around 205 miles per hour.
And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Ant, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, just edging out Alexander Olbon, who'll start from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Leclerc, Perez, Pierre Gasly, and Vettel, Norris, Verstappen, Bottas, and Daniel Ricciardo, Sainz, Ocon, Kevin Magnussen, and De Vries, Stroll, Russell, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Daniel Kvyat, Latifi, and a Red Bull rounds off the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. After the points finish last race, let's aim to keep the momentum going. So you know how every week took the stick out at Jeff and Co Masters for um, basically not um, ever saying no horizon sand of off for F1 2019. Well, it's got worse for F1 2020 because he literally just says, now we can, he literally says that line every single time because we, of course, we're in a rebel, we're, we're supposed to score points every race. But anyway, five red lights are on, and eventually we're out. And it's initially we initially bogged down. So does everybody else in the unrealistic tyre smoke that doesn't really happen in real life. Um, we're coming down into turn one. We have to take avoiding action to avoid the back of a stroll. I think that was. They get a warning with Kvyat, and we could be forced out by Magnussen there. That's going to allow De Vries to come back out the inside. We're going to try and squeeze it around the outside. That will turn to the inside. We've got Ocon and Giovinazzi having a bing bang. But can we get round to that, the outside of Magnussen into this corner? Will K might give us a space? No, he won't. That's um, just like Canada. Ocon now tries to come back at us. We're going to um, take a leaf out of Kevin Magnussen's book and try and squeeze into the outside there. But we do get the momentum now with the second stage of. Um, overtake mode and does that and we all have to take avoiding action almost again as uh, Ocon um, can try to come back with Sainz and Mac, um, Bottas going very slowly Bottas really having a terrible thing time at it as we finally get past Magnussen around the outside into the final corner um, that's definitely one of my signature moves around this track we get Sainz also around the well what would have been around the outside to turn one although we do get him on the exit turn one we bang wheels and that allows Maxson to get past sides as well. So we're now chasing up to uh, Max Verstappen in these other in the other house. Down the inside of him and it's and the hats is really poor this year. I mean it's the third slowest car on the grid and Verstappen hasn't even got any points. Next up is Lando Norris. Valtteri Bottas is making up positions. This is an easy, easy move. We're, we're not even at the braking zone and we're already past. So definitely problems there for McLaren. As we're watching the race leader now, Pierre Gasly leads this race for Alpha Tauri. He had an absolutely momentous start, as we're gonna find out now. This is the start from Gasly. So look at this. Five of lights, lights out, and where people sort of bogged down, the Ferrari sort of got a better thing, but it was Hamilton who had pole and just blocked the Ferrari and allow Gasly to take go stretch out into the lead. Obviously he doesn't have the performance here but um, the Alpha Tauri has one of the best engines thanks to me, upgrade them. But yes we've jumped to lap 7 and we're coming into the pits to make our one and only stop. Obviously doing the alternative strategy here. Albon is on the hard so he's got ahead of Gasly um, so he will have effectively the race lead but the Hans are absolutely woeful. I don't know why he's got on the Hans. 2.5 seconds stop, not bad. For, and puts us out ahead of Russell as well. I was, I was hoping we didn't get avoided. I know we wouldn't get voided by Latifi. Um, 
blocked by the Latifi. Where is it going to be? We're going to come out behind. We should be ahead of... We might be ahead of Bottas, you know. Yes, Bottas has had a woeful out stint there. Um, and he's two seconds behind us now. And we're going into hyperdrive mode. To see if we can catch up and get ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Um, he sort of, his AI has sort of uh, picked up a trait back on 2019. When he moves on to those higher, harder tyres, he just literally falls back. Um, and that's pretty much what happened. What's happened there, he's gone back down into 8th place. Bottas is catching up to him, I mean, compared to Mercedes. But, a miracle happened. We set the fastest lap of the Grand Prix on lap 10. Um, I'm not sure if Albon's got any damage or not, as we're watching. Uh, ooh! Nick De Vries has is out of this race with a uh, with a failure. That's another failure for Haas. Uh, that's very ominous. As we catch up to Sergio Perez, look at the train that Albon is causing. I mean, this we we're, we're the fastest person on this track. Um, it's like um, if you've been subscribed to the channel this long, Final Fantasy Season Three Monaco, where Gasly and Renault was leading as we're going to make this an easy move on Perez. He was lead. oh no, well it was an easy move, we're going to have to stick this to the outside, force Perez to the inside on the curving, and there we go. Um, the second part of the thing is, Ricardo is still holding out Bottas, so he's not going to really come in, make any inroads on us. But yes, it was like that, it's like this really, where no, none of the none of the people behind can really get past the leader. As we're looking now at Sebastian Vettel, we go wide. That's going to allow us to get Vettel slow through that section. It wasn't really meant to be an overtake, just like in Canada. But nevertheless, we are through. I didn't really mean to do that. I mean, the understeer there really forced us wide with the tyres slowly um, going off, um, getting a bit of mould onto them as we now round the outside of Charles Leclerc now we're going to try and uh, slipstream but their course Ferrari has still got their illegal power unit in this game uh, inside there hopefully Coke Masters again will have a performance patch so then the Ferrari are actually where they're supposed to be in power but we do get past eventually and that leads us on to uh, the, this is the final lap as well lap number 13 we're looking now down the inside of Lewis Hamilton at the end other thing we force him out as well Gasly has got in front of Albon as well and that mean, that has allowed us to have a little look Gasly, Albon closes us off we have contact with Albon and we do get a warning for that but really we're not really getting on as teammates um, as he has a look up our inside we're going to force him out into that into the Lawrence Hamilton I'm not really happy that he hasn't allowed us to go past because potential, that's potentially, well, it will have cost the rest of the race when Gasly's too far ahead and he's making a little bit too much of it. But that's a concern that Albon really, we've beaten him for a couple of races now. Potentially, it's a great finish for us. And I'm absolutely ecstatic that we've managed to get second place, not fifth from 20th on the grid I mean we we had a 192 grid police penalty and we came back from Narnia to second place but at the same time it shouldn't really have been second we was, should have really been in what I don't know Perez wasn't doing that much so potentially sixth, seventh place in this race with the performance we had, don't get me wrong, the pace was there today, but the leaders, the Mercedes, Hamilton, the Ferrari, should have really stretched away at the front and not allowed to be slowed up behind Albon. I don't know what sort of problem he had, whether it was just like engine wear or something. It wasn't. He had. I checked his front wing, and he didn't. And he had a full and tap front wing. So yes, but in terms of the drivers, we move up to P4, and. We're closing in on this lead. Hamilton is back up and back up to the front as well after a poor race for Bottas. So the momentum swinging our way. We could be. We've just. 
we were so far back at one point this season that we could have been fired. But the momentum has swung our way and we could now be on for a driver's world championship at the end of the season. We'll have to wait and see. From structures, we're still a little bit way behind, but we are closing in on both Mercedes and Ferrari. The fans really seem to enjoy that. You made it look easy. There's quite a buzz around this team at the moment. What are your thoughts on them? I really don't care about Haskler. They're dreadful and their reliability is awful as well. Do you have any comments about the collisions? Nope. Simple as that. Thank you for your time. Unrelated questions as usual there from Claire. But So yes, P2. Fantastic race. I couldn't believe it after uh, get, getting to P2 like... The fact of the matter is, is that Albon helped us out big time there. If it wasn't for him going so slowly and just backing up everybody on those, he had some sort of problem, especially on hard tyres as well, when everybody else was on mediums. But yes, in the next episode, we'll have a new contract as well to look at. Um, we've got these two tyre wear upgrades, but tyre wear is not really a thing for me. So we're really going to save up these resource points for the engine. I've also got to think about durability as well because the engine store, remember, um, although it should be okay to go to the end of the season, but um, probably putting a few every now and again, so split that up between the aero and the durability. But yes, we'll have a new contract. Albon is still 93 rate and he's still having problems, although he did get a podium, but he's still he's behind us now by quite some margin as well. That's a, that's almost a race victory in the championship. But yes, if you have enjoyed this video, then leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you new, see more episodes um, of the F1 2020 crew mode as when they come out. Next one will be tomorrow around Austria. Until the next year, I think it's time to take care. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your day and goodbye. <laughs>